provide. So let's get started. These are some of the topics that I plan to touch on today based on the questions that we get about our youngest students. How does a parent know if their child has high ability or potential for advanced performance? What characteristics should be you be looking for? And what is this program SIG all about? And then why is SIG a good program for young, bright children? And what could I be doing at home with my young child who appears to have advanced abilities? So let's look at the first question. Because the youngest students in our programs are in the five to six year old group, that's the age that I'm going to focus on for the purposes of this webinar. But this information can be extrapolated by degree and to both older and younger children. First, I don't think it's particularly helpful for parents to get caught up in terms that might confuse or restrict your ability to consider your child individually in terms of how to provide the most appropriate educational experiences. Terms like gifted, creative, bright, advanced, talented, and so forth help educators describe a type of educational programming in a field dedicated to serving the needs of students who demonstrate abilities above the norm, and they're important terms for that reason. But I encourage you to think more about your own children's situation rather than wondering if they fit into a, a certain or specific category by definition. So many parents ask us how they would know if their young children fit into this group. It's a logical question, especially if you have an only child or you're in a family of very bright children where no one stands out as being particularly different, or if you've not had occasion to be around larger groups of children in which these kinds of differences would be obvious, or even if your child has not yet been tested in school in ways that would, would provide these kinds of indicators. And parents are actually very good judges of the abilities of their children as they're around them continuously. And you have the opportunity to observe them in all kinds of situations that require thinking, knowledge, and problem solving. So as that close observer, what should you notice? These are some of the general categories that I will use today to reference behaviors common in gifted, talented, and creative learners. It's important to remember that all gifted children are all different from each other and that no child will likely demonstrate all these characteristics at the same time. You just want to look for trends of repeating characteristics that you see mentioned here. If you notice several of these categories in your child, it's likely that you will need to give focused attention to their learning and educational needs to be sure that they are learning at an appropriately challenging level, are learning about new things and in ways they enjoy, and that they remain engaged in the learning process. So starting with language development, these characteristics include abilities in the areas of advanced vocabulary, using full sentences and rich descriptive language, and um, show interest in having uh, love of books and in wanting to read. Inquisitiveness, these children will be highly observant, ask probing questions, not just lots of questions, but questions that uh, dig deeper and have follow-up questions and suggest explanations for the things that they observe. Complex thinking abilities, some children will demonstrate logical thinking, an understanding of abstract concepts, for their age, and an ability to sense discrepancies in things around them. So they'll see where information is missing or where things don't make sense. Advanced thinking abilities. These are children who have a long attention span, longer than you expect for their age, who can solve problems creatively or differently, have a great retention of information, quick mastery of information, and they can remember information and they can focus on tasks in the presence of distractions. And my personal favorite, they may demonstrate an advanced sense of humor, so they're lots of fun. In the area of asynchronicity, these children whose mental abilities surpass their chronological age may be bored with age mates, may seek to play with older children, or engage comfortably with adults. 
be interested in advanced ideas and topics and demonstrate leadership skills normally found in older students. And finally, intensities. Gifted children think and feel intensely, so they may become frustrated easily. They may be highly critical of their own work. They may have strong feelings about justice and fairness and right and wrong, and they may be highly competitive and sensitive to their environment. So what does all this have to do with the Summer Institute for the Gifted, or SIG, as we call it? These characteristics that I just talked about describe the kinds of children that SIG was created to serve. It's been our mission since 1984 to provide opportunities for their growth and development in enrichment programs, mostly during the summer. We believe our programs are especially good for the children who are the focus of this webinar. The National Association for Gifted Children, NAGC, states that practices for young gifted children should be both developmental and individually appropriate. Children need to be actively involved in their own learning, and educators have to meet each child where he or she is developmentally. We think that concept describes SIG perfectly. In our courses, students are exposed to curriculum that is appropriate for their age and interests, and is modified according to their level of readiness once they enter the course. And there is much flexibility in the direction of each course and the ability for students to take control over their learning, as you will see in the rest of this webinar. While we've been providing residential and commuter programs since 1984, we've been running day programs for ages 5 to 12 since 2003. We refer to our young day programs as the investigators programs and our older residential slash commuter programs as the innovators program. There is some overlap depending on the campuses attended, but you will see these program names referenced in our materials. We have 12 investigator programs across the country this year that will offer courses for five to six year olds. And you can see them listed here with a map of their locations. And of course, you can also see this on the website and in our informational brochures. To participate in our investigators programs, all students must be ages 5 to 12 by the end of the summer, August 31st. More specifically, our very youngest students must be age 5 by June 1st, 2020. All applicants must submit required eligibility and all students must submit evidence of mandatory vaccination to attend. Here's a graphic showing our eligibility requirements. Students are required to provide evidence of high academic ability, high creative thinking ability, or accelerated achievement. There are two paths that you can take for eligibility. You just choose one, the academic achievement intellectual route or the route for demonstrating eligibility and creative thinking behaviors. Students may choose either one of these routes to demonstrate their proficiency. And for more information about the process, we would invite you to go to our website at giftofstudy.org and read more about that. While most of our international students are residential, we also have a fair amount who attend the day investigator program. So I'll just mention quickly that for international students, we also require demonstration of proficiency in the English language as we are an English only program. Again, there are many ways to demonstrate eligibility for entrance both in language and in qualifications, and we encourage you, again, to explore the admissions website. The STEAM Plus curriculum at SIG is based on a model of academics that involves both enrichment and acceleration. Our academic approach allows for flexibility, offers personalized learning, provides opportunities for problem-centered learning, immersive students,
the knowledge that they are gaining in our courses. Each course has a set of objectives that we can tailor for each class, and in each course we encourage students to tell us what they are curious about. There is less structure and greater independence than you will find in a typical classroom. SIG Academics is personalized. At SIG, we realize that not all students learn in the same way or pace, and they're not all interested in the same topics. So we tailor them to meet the needs of each student while also encouraging group collaboration. Instructors pre-assess the knowledge and skills that students bring to the course to modify the direction of the class as needed and meet with students to determine their individual goals. For very young children, we help them figure out what they would like to learn more about in the class. As the idea of self-directed learning is new to them, and as the topics will likely be new to them as well. Our academic focus is on problem-centered learning. We want students to apply new knowledge to real or authentic problems and start to think like professionals do as they address challenges in their field. We use a multidisciplinary curriculum model Courses engage the multiple STEAM fields of science, technology, engineering, arts, humanities, and math. This model is also indicative of how people function in real life. You can't do real science without math. You can't make engineering designs without technology and art, and on and on and on. We provide programming for the whole child. We not only develop students intellectually, we also provide social, cultural, and recreational opportunities that nurture children's social skills, as well as the natural talents that we've been talking about. Six students interact with like-minded peers to build acceptance and establish lifelong friendships. Yes, even in five and six-year-olds. At the end of the program, students receive a student performance review, or SPR as we call it, for each completed course. In it, instructors will provide feedback that highlights the accomplishments and progression of each student within the course and personal objectives while offering recommendations for future study. Now, all our sessions are overseen by a program director as well as an on-site director. There is an office manager on-site instructors who teach the courses, and program assistants who help our instructors in class activities. Some of our larger programs will also have an academic dean and other supporting staff. Each day, students attend four course periods, each 90 minutes long. They're, of course, not sitting for 90 minutes. They're moving around to different activities. Courses begin at 8.45 a.m. and run through 4 p.m. Extended care for early drop-off and late pickup is available. And we also accept half-day students who can either attend the morning for the first two classes or the afternoon for the last two classes. All students receive lunch and enjoy social time with their peers during the lunch activity period. We offer 10 courses for five to six-year-olds. Availability dependent on the selected campus that you would attend. You can see that we focus a lot on STEM areas in our program. So first we have a new course called Pop Into Balloon Science, where children will learn about physical properties of natural forces and chemical reactions through the use of balloons. We also have a good old standby chemicals in action equal chemical reaction will provide students with a fundamental understanding of the principles of chemistry and scientific experimentation. Our numbers, puzzles, patterns, and problem solving course will increase problem solving skills and number sense for general application. We have a new course called Magical Science in which students will understand how science concepts can be used in entertainment, such as in magic tricks. And in Under the Sea, Humans at Work, students will learn how the ocean can sustain human life for marine research and show them how they can use creative problem solving to engineer solutions. And another new course is called Factory Fun, 
students will use their problem-solving skills and creativity to engineer the manufacturing processes of a new product. We also offer multi-age classes in arts and recreation that five and six-year-olds can take. Uh, Sig Staple is in theater, children's theater play, where children can create a fantasy world, play theater games, create characters, gain stage presence, and express their creativity. In melodious music, students will be learning how to listen for rhythm, beats, and pitch, and use simple percussion and homemade instruments. They're also invited to bring in their own if they have them and choose to. In fanciful and fun whimsical art, we are encouraging imagination and task the children with ways to apply whimsical art for different kinds of purposes. And finally, SIG Olympics, are you game? With the summer of Olympics coming up, this course brings the Olympics to the students' attention, lets them play games and sports, as well as create a new sport that they would like to see in the Olympics. So how do all these courses address the characteristics that I mentioned earlier that you see repeated here on the screen? So let's take a closer look at each of them. All SIG courses develop language. All introduce new vocabulary. All ask students to express their ideas. All have opportunities to read and write. In terms of language development, think of words like buoyancy and hovercraft in the balloon science course, or words like habitats and submersion in under the sea. Think refractions and illusions in magical science. So you can see they'll be learning lots of new words. The chemistry and magic courses have books attached to them, but all courses use written and visual resources. Inquisitive children, as mentioned earlier, are highly observant, ask probing questions, and suggest explanations for things they observe. And all of our courses develop curiosity. We pose questions and encourage students to think of questions of their own. All courses ask students to make conclusions, whether through observation or logic or research. Magical science is a good example of trying to understand what happens in a magic trick. In chemistry, students have to hypothesize about what will happen when different chemical reactions occur, prompting their own questions as to how and why those things happen or didn't happen. And factory fun is a great avenue for developing curiosity as children want to know how things are made. For complex thinking abilities where children will demonstrate logical thinking, understanding abstract concepts, and sense discrepancy in things around them, we have courses like Numbers. A good example of a course that requires students to think complexly because we ask them to think logically, create and see patterns, and understand how different base systems work. And there are fewer things more complex than figuring out how to manufacture a new product in factory fun or how to design a research habitat underwater, as in under the sea. Children who have advanced thinking abilities have a long attention span, solve problems creatively or differently, have great retention, mastery, and memory of information, and can focus on tasks. And we have that advanced sense of humor, too. So these are the skills they need for all of our classes, particularly courses like Factory Fun and Under the Sea, where they're solving problems that require design and engineering processes and where they need to draw on previously learned information as well as the new information that they're gaining. Their sense of humor, ever-present, comes out to play, especially in the arts courses. Children who are mentally out of sync with their age mates, may be bored with peers, may seek to play with older children or engage with adults, may be interested
by their interest in science, in balloon science, chemistry, and under the sea. They'll be able to become an inventor, business person, and marketer in fact refined should they have a burgeoning aptitude in any of these areas, areas that you might not normally be exposed to in kindergarten and first grade. SIG is a great place for children who think and feel intensely. The courses provide them with areas where they can work on problems that concern them and come up with solutions to help people, as in factory fun, or practice their perfectionism by the repeated practice needed in perfecting a magic trick in magical science. They can show their concern for cleaning up the oceans and under the sea, and they can express their intense feelings in theater, music, and art, not to mention expelling intense energy in the Olympics. As mentioned earlier, we want our students not only to learn, but also to socialize and have fun. We've established several theme days on campus, things like Crazy Hair Day, Pajama Day, Fun Sock Day, to name a few, to allow students a chance to express their fun and creative side. Theme days vary from campus to campus and are determined by the site's director. Simply put, our goal is for your child to have the most rewarding, academically challenging, and socially fulfilling summer that is possible. We want all our students to explore their intellectual curiosities, all within a safe, secure, and fun environment. So what can you do at home then after SIG to follow up or before SIG? Well, play games. Choose games that require strategy, problem solving, and creativity, and better yet, have your children make up their own games. Creative play is important at all ages, but of course, natural and imperative with young children. Movement, physical activity, role playing, imaginative play, and sports are all great ways to engage the mind and body. Open up the brain to all kinds of possibilities and engage those executive functioning skills of organization, focus, planning, and so forth. Reading, listening, drama, storytelling, anything that develops language and communication builds on the gifted child's natural ability to recognize symbol systems, to hear the cadence of language, to learn listening skills, to learn vocabulary, and to comprehend meaning through context, and then to put together language sequencing and order through their own storytelling. We want to expose children to multiple cultures early, as well as to enrich their understanding of diversity all over the world, to support tolerance for others, and also simply to increase their knowledge of geography at times. Participate in activities and holidays of multiple cultures. Go to museums, read library books that include multiple cultures, and introduce words from other languages, and so forth. Young children have a natural affinity for music and movement, so sing lots of different kinds of songs with them. Expose them to simple musical instruments. Encourage them to make up their own songs and dances. It doesn't matter that you might not feel musical or artistic on your own. I've also never found a young child who didn't like science, so do experiments at home. Go to science museums. Talk about science in action, such as when you're cooking or outside kite flying, go to aquariums and planetariums and encourage your child to notice things and to ask questions about what they see. Then afterwards, ask them questions about what they discovered or what they liked or what most impressed them about something they did or saw. Then you can start to get a sense of areas of future study that might intrigue them. In addition to creative physical activity, Children need outlets for creative play that engage their mind by playing with materials. Maker spaces are very popular right now, so you might want to set up your own maker space at home using found objects, random materials, and other items that seem to intrigue your child or are related to areas they seem to like. And then just let them play around with them and see what they come up with. You could pose a problem to solve or just let their imaginations go where they will. Math activity helps children understand order in their world 
and satisfies many of the thinking characteristics that we've discussed today and is easily incorporated into everything you do. So measuring and cooking, dividing up treats among friends, calculating amounts of materials needed for a project, calculating costs for an activity or project or vacation, creating a code to communicate with someone so that no one else knows what you're communicating. These are all simple things that you can do on the fly. And of course, there are all kinds of number games you can purchase or create on your own. These are just a sampling of the kinds of activities we recommend to help you learn more about the abilities of your young children and to gauge their minds and bodies so that they can continue to nurture their emerging talents and interests. I'm sure you can think of many more on your own that you probably are already doing, and there are numerous resources available to parents as well. I've talked a lot, but now I'd like to hear from you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box. Welcome back. We have a question. Um, the parent is asking, my child is five and he's particular about his likes and dislikes. If we enroll and he doesn't want to continue, is there a partial refund? Unfortunately, once the student is attending, we're not able to give a refund. Um, we would ask you to go to the website and look at the refund policy on that. Um, but we think that uh, if he'll have a good time, if, if he's particular about his likes and dislikes, that's great news for us because that helps us know how to work with them individually. The next question is how many kids in one class or group? It certainly varies from class to class, but we try to give students the classes they want, so some will be larger and some will be smaller. In our day or investigative programs, the average is 10 to 12. Uh, some will be much smaller and uh, a few will be uh, maybe as many as 15. Can I select any course that is available in location? When you enroll, you can certainly select any course that's available at location that's in your age group. The only change may come uh, later if there aren't enough students enrolled in that course. It may be canceled. That's why we encourage parents to register early so they can get the courses that they uh, would like to have. Another question is, what if my child is homeschooled? Would SIG be a good fit socially for a child five years? Yes, we think that SIG is a great program for homeschooled children because it does give them not only that academic outlet, but also it allows them to meet students they wouldn't normally meet and to make some new friends and have that great social experience. Next question is, would we suggest signing up your child for a course in an area that may not be as easy for them? For example, my child excels in reading, but seems a less secure in math. Uh, we encourage you to sign up for the courses that you want to sign up for. Uh, we also like for parents to consult with their children. I know with the five and six-year-olds, they may not have as much of an opinion but we like for them to be involved in decision-making as early as possible. But it, it's certainly a good idea to challenge yourself. So I would...
in science or chemistry? Um, how can we help them be prepared before they come? I think that uh, that you shouldn't worry about that, that the, the teachers are going to take them at the point where they are when they start. So we'll pre-assess when they get there to see what their level of understanding is. And then the teachers will work with them from the knowledge that they bring in to take them further along. So I, I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, what type of lunch is provided? It's, um, it's always a kid-friendly friend, lunch. Depending on the campus, it may be catered in from an outside vendor or it might be provided from the school's cafeteria. We always send you a menu out ahead of time so you can see what's going to be provided each day. Um, the question is also, is there recess? Yes, there's recess, recess during lunch. There's an hour provided for lunch, which of course you know five and six year olds do not need. <laughs> so they usually get at least a half hour of recess during that time. And lunch is provided, of course, in the half day enrollment. Um, do we offer coding at the seven year old level or is this up to the up to six year olds? Yes, we do offer concepts of coding and engineering, which is course P13. Is there a question, is a laptop required if specified in the course description? Yes, if the course says that a laptop is required, then yes, you would need to provide one. Yes, um, there's a question, does Woods Academy cater to seven-year-olds? Uh, yes, uh, the Woods Academy enrolls students from five to 12. The question is, what type of training do the instructors have? Our instructors are all professionals in their in fields. Most of them are teachers at the elementary or secondary level. And, and then in addition to the training they have as teachers or wherever profession they come from, we provide additional training through our webinars and through our orientation. There's a question about kids in a dorm. Um, <laughs> we, of course, at the five and six year old level, don't have any kids in the dorm. But starting at age nine, nine to 17, they do have the opportunity to be residential. And it would, well, in, I, I'm assuming you mean in the dorm room, not just in the dorm. But in a room, there is opportunity some, some places to have singles. Some are doubles and some are suites with, uh, you know, up to four students within a suite. Okay. There's the question, how many alternative courses should we choose? Well, uh, you would just choose one alternative for each period and then, uh, you know, if that alternative didn't work out, then you would be contacted to choose something different. The question is, my son was born on August 16, 2007, so I'm wondering which group you should apply to, 11, 12, or 13. That would be the M level. That would be uh, for the 13-year-olds. The question, how are behavioral difficulties managed in the classroom? don't have too much problem with behavioral difficulties because the students are very engaged and interested in what they're doing. We also have a program assistant in each classroom with the teacher. So there is the ability there to give lots of individual attention to um, students. But should the need be, students would be directed. Uh, they would be asked to change their behavior. At extreme cases, they would be removed from the classroom. Uh, very, very rare extreme uh, situations, they would be removed from the program, but that is a very, very rare instance that doesn't happen very often. Only innovators, 9 to 17, have the residential option. Yes, that is correct. There's a question about how are 504 or IEP plans accommodated in our program. When uh, parents let us know that their students have these plans or different classifications, it's very important that they send us 
all the information they can about special accommodations that are needed. And then we pass this information on to the academic dean and then eventually to the instructors of the courses those students have. So we do appreciate that information being provided as quickly as possible. In the occasion that our child is late to class, would they be able to join in his or her scheduled class? Yes, of course. Uh, you would check them into the office and then they would be escorted into their class. Okay. So when is the earliest and latest pickup and drop off time? The courses run 8.45 to 4, but we do provide extended care in the morning and the afternoon. So you can come as early as 7.45, and you can pick up as late as 6 p.m. Can I apply for my son to a one-year down class? I'm assuming that means going from P level to B level, for, for example. Yes, you can always go down a level in your class because we know the, the topics vary and they should go where their interests are, so that's perfectly fine. My son is 12 in April. I want to register him in Princeton, which only accepts kids 13 to 17. Can I register for him? You would have to wait until uh, next year to go to Princeton, but if you're looking in that vicinity, he's perfect age for the Bryn Mawr program, Bryn Mawr College in Philadelphia. The next question is, what about going up a level? You can apply for a waiver to take a class that's a level above your age grade, and you can contact our office for the process for that. Um, and yes, there's another question about enrolling in a class that's um, in a level below, so yes, you can do that. Okay, it looks like that's all the questions that we're going to have for now. So I want to thank you. Those are some great questions. So this will be the end of our webinar time. If you still have questions that you think of after the fact, or if you have specific needs that are special to you, please feel free to reach out to us at the following phone numbers or email. You can also find more information on our website, giftedstudy.org. And don't forget to connect with us on social media. We have a lot of social media links. And as we like to say, explore your summer expand your mind, and join us at SIG in 2020. Thank you.